The Bible tells us that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. And if knowing that fact bothers you, I highly recommend you watch this video because in it, you will find comfort. All right, folks, let's get into this one. I am going to start with the very passage that is tied to the title of this video, and that is the day of the Lord. Now, let's get into this. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm going to read this to you, and then we are going to talk about the type of things that we are seeing. And I can tell you this, if you are worried about the thought of the day of the Lord coming as a thief in the night, listen to this video because I think you will not only be encouraged, but I think you'll be enlightened. And I also think that you'll actually find some hope and a lot of sense is going to be made of what you're actually watching. So let's get into this. This is verse one of 1 Thessalonians chapter five. Now the apostle Paul has just finished telling the church about the rapture and what's going to happen in the rapture itself. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter four. And so he goes on in verse 1 of chapter 5 by saying this, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Now, those are some pretty ominous words, and those are some heavy words. And yes, I will spend some time I'm talking about the day of the Lord coming as a thief in the night. And yes, I'll even talk about how sudden it will be and how absolutely inescapable it will be. So let's go on to verse four first, because this one is going to be very important. Look at this. He says, but you brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you. You are children of the light and the children of the day, and we are not of the night nor of darkness. So watch this. This is really important, right? The apostle Paul is telling us that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. There will be lots of people that will be shocked when this day happens. They won't be expecting it. They will have not seen it coming. They're going to be absolutely blown away at the fact that this judgment is at hand, and they're going to be completely dumbfounded by what has happened. But the Bible makes it very clear that to us, we know it's coming. We see the signs. And this is really important because the Bible makes it very, very clear that we are going to be looking at the signs signs of the times, and those signs of the times are going to tell us that we are getting closer to that time. And folks, we are seeing so many aspects of this that I think are really, really important. We are looking at the world literally setting themselves up against the nation of Israel. We are looking at Saudi Arabia doing things that we've never seen them do before. We are looking at this unbelievable picture right now that is being created by this million dollar peace plan that everybody is talking about. There's so many things here that we're going to get into and we're even beginning to see the rise of globalism. We're looking at a cashless society and all the discussions that surround that. We're talking about stuff that's just outright Orwellian. We just went over some of these stories and all of these things are things that we can go back to in the Bible that point to this and make total and perfect sense. Look at some of these headlines, folks. I want you to see them because they're all very, very important, right? In the Jerusalem Post, here's this uh, a very interesting title. It says this. It says, Israel gears up for potential ICC warrants over Gaza actions. And, um, and this is amazing, right? Uh, Foreign Minister Katz warns of backlash. Like, think about this for a second, right? I mean, the international court is actually wanting to file a criminal case where it has absolutely no jurisdiction, okay? But that shouldn't surprise anybody. How about this? This is an amazing story from Israel National News. U.S. legislators will act against the ICC if warrants are issued uh, for Israelis, which is probably a pretty good thing. But what does this speak of? This speaks of a whole bunch of instability that we're walking into, and there's more and more of this happening, right? How about this? The United States, this is something I thought I would never see. The United States is holding up weapons shipments to Israel for the last two weeks. Folks, we have been keeping Israel from getting the weapons that they need to be able to do the things that they actually are supposed to do. And these are not weapons that we promised them to give them to help them. These are weapons that they paid for, right? Like this is, 
It's just absolutely crazy. And how about the idea that we are watching a massive surge in anti-Semitism? Like, think about this, folks. Anti-Semitism, this is a title in the Times of Israel. Anti-Semitism surging, report finds, prompting fear for future of Jewish life in the West. Look at what's going on in the college campuses. Look at how people are scared to go to their jobs. People are worried about going uh, to just work uh, in their schools. People are worried about all kinds of things because of the radical anti-Semitism that's going on. And another article, Times of Israel, right? Netanyahu, if Israel is forced to stand alone against the enemy, what? We will stand alone. I mean, tell me if we're not seeing a manifestation of Zechariah. Tell me if we're not looking at Zechariah 13, Zechariah 14. These are all things that should not surprise us. And how about this? How about this guy? Now, this is an interesting uh, article, and I would highly recommend going into this, right? Time Magazine, a million-dollar Middle East peace plan. And if you go into this, uh, uh, this article, understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to propose the type of peace plan that actually puts Israel to the side and in essence opens up all kinds of doors for the type of things that we see and know are going to happen in the book of Revelation. Or how about this? This one shocks me, right? Saudi Arabia. It actually shouldn't shock me, but it is somewhat shocking, okay? This is this is astounding. Look at this article. Saudi Arabia steps up arrests of those attacking Israel online. Folks, it's no joke. They're actually doing this. Or how about this? You want to talk about globalism and the nonsense that we're seeing with the globalism around us, right? Here's an article in the Vigilant Fox. It says, U.S. senators drop a bombshell on the World Health Organization. Okay, so if you don't know what that story is, the United States uh, senators are basically saying, hey, Joe Biden, we don't want you to give authority to the World Health Organization. We'll see what happens with that uh, because quite frankly, he's about ready to sign over the kingdom to the uh, World Health Organization. And this is the move, the globalist move that we see going on around this, right? Or how about this one? New global currency designed to ditch US dollar, avert sanctions emerging as BRICS leaders prepare to meet. Folks, no joke. The kind of work that these folks are doing the kind of things that's absolutely happening, it is absolutely insane. But that's the kind of thing that we're actually seeing, and it's a thing that's in front of us, right? Or how about, again, going on with the cashless society, all the things that are happening, right? Look at these stories, right? The Macquarie Bank to go completely cashless this month. It's no joke, right? It's no joke. And this, jo uh, by the way, there are many banks that are there in that same country that have already gone in that direction. And it's happening more and more and more and more and more. We're seeing it everywhere. We're beginning to see it more prominent in Australia. We're seeing it all over the world. And the reality of it is there is a move to go cashless and you have to go cashless if Revelation 13 is gonna end up taking place. Or how about this thing? Just outright Orwellian, right? Like just outright absolutely crazy. Canada to imprison anyone, here's the operative term, who has ever posted hate speech online. By the way, this is one of the stories that we went over uh, and uh, we talked about, I believe this was the Saturday story that we went over. And it's just absolutely insane when you think about the doors that are being opened as a result of this new law. And this law that he's wanting to pass is gonna pretty much make it to where the police can find anything they want on you just to shut you up. And this is kind of a precursor to keeping Christians quiet. And it's amazing what Trudeau is doing in Canada. And it's amazing how many people are actually going to outright roll with it or how about this fox news damning report details biden admins big tech censorship push like think about this we see evidence it's already come out testimony sworn testimony from these big tech companies basically saying that the biden regime has pretty much strong-armed them into actually enforcing whatever it is they want enforced to keep the political operative narrative whatever you want to call it alive it's absolutely crazy, right? Or how about this? This one bothers me probably the most, right? LifeNews.com. New York Attorney General Letitia James declares total war on pro-life pregnancy centers. I have to read a portion of this one because this one is just unbelievably, right? It says this, and the article is 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 insane. I'm going to read a portion of this. It says, last week, New York Attorney General Letitia James blitzed 
at least a dozen pregnancy help organizations like our clients, Heartbeat International, uh, Compass Care, and other pregnancy centers with a notice of intent to sue, threatening ruinous prosecution that could shut down every pregnancy center in New York. Why? Because these awesome pro-life ministries are going to women who have taken the after-morning abortion pill and are actually saving the baby's lives because they know how to reverse the effects of it. Folks, it is amazing how they're wanting to make it illegal in New York to make a statement to any of these girls that they can reverse the effects of this uh, abortive pill. I mean, it's absolutely crazy. And the funny thing is, as we look at all of these events around us, none of these events should surprise us. None of them should shock us. None of them should cause us to look at things and go, oh man, uh, you know, what's happening here? The Bible told us that we would see things related to this, whether it be from the globalism theme to the issue related to all of the Orwellian things we're seeing to the totalitarian regimes that want to come in and shut you up to all of these things. The Bible told us that these things would happen. And here's what the Bible tells us. I'll read the verses to you again, right? Verse five, you are all the children of the light and the children of the day, and we are not of the night nor of darkness. Why? Because the Bible tells us that if we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, we will be taken up. The Bible makes it very, very clear that we have salvation in him. And if we're walking with the Lord, we don't have to worry about him coming as a thief in the night because that coming is not going to be for us. That coming is going to be a part of him redeeming Israel. And the reality of it is we will have already been gone. We will have already been raptured. And the real uh, issue here is are we going to put our faith and trust in the Lord or are we not going to put our faith and the trust in the Lord, right? And if you're here and you've never walked with God, you don't have a relationship with him, you're worried about all the things that you're seeing, the whole idea of the day of the Lord coming as a thief in the night, if that bothers you, it doesn't have to bother you anymore because all you need to do is say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, forgive me of my sins, make me brand new and live a life for him, right? But the reality of it is, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he rose from the dead, and you trust in him for your salvation, you trust in his finished work, you don't have to worry about going to hell, and you certainly don't have to worry about being left behind because you will undoubtedly be raptured. And the more you walk with God, the more aware you will be of your surroundings. You're not gonna have to be worried about this uh, uh, coming of the Lord so being as a thief in the night. You don't ever have to worry or, or be freaked out about the many things that you're seeing. And if you're here and you're listening to me and you're saying, oh, amen, James, amen, and I agree with you and 100%, I'm walking with the Lord. Well, here's the message for you. Because this message is really critical if you're a believer, if you love the Lord, if you're walking with the Lord. Maybe you're not walking with the Lord. Well, get right with the Lord, start walking with him, and then pay attention to this next verse. Look what it says in verse six. It says, therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but what? Let us watch and be sober. These are the three commands that it gives us. He says, first of all, don't sleep like everybody else. Everybody else is sleeping. Everybody else is wanting to turn off. They're tuning out. They're turning off. And that's what happens when people choose to stand in spiritual sleep. They're literally tuning out. They're not wanting themselves to be aware of the things that are going on. They're not thinking about those things. They're not looking to those things. They're not allowing themselves to be given to those things. And so the reality of it is they're just completely tuning out. And that's what's happening. And there are people that are walking addicted to drugs and pornography and, uh, you know, uh, running into escapes, uh, spending their whole lives in movie theaters or online, all kinds of things that people are doing to allow themselves to be sleepy, right? To allow themselves to kind of fall asleep. But the Bible tells us as believers, don't do that. Don't sleep. Do not allow yourself to be given to a state of unconsciousness to the things that are around you. Be open. Keep your eyes open. Be sharp. Be aware of the things that are going on. But my favorite commands in this verse, the last two commands, it says this. It says what? It says, let us what? Watch and be sober. Because here's the thing that happens. You could be watching till you're blue in the face. You could have your eyes wide open. You could see all kinds of things taking place. But if you're inebriated, you will not know how to process it. And you certainly won't know what to do. You'll be disoriented. You'll be spatially lost. You'll, you'll literally be in a place where you're looking at the same thing that everybody else is looking at, but you don't know what you're doing. Think of it like this. If I've got two soldiers that are standing guard at a guard tower, 
And one of those soldiers is completely drunk while another one is completely sober. Meaning he's not under the influence of any drugs. There's nothing that he's seeing. There's nothing like that that's distracting him. He's just very aware. He's very sharp. He's very sober. Let's just assume that that's the case. Okay? Pretend that for just one second. When he sees somebody walking down the road and he looks at the guard tower, the one who's drunk is going to go, hey, yeah. when the guy who's sober is going to put down his weapon and say, hey, you better cooperate with me or there's going to be a consequence. Here's what happens. When you choose to allow yourself to be given to sin, you become inebriated. You allow yourself to become complete. You, you have lost your, so, your, your sobriety. By the way, the fastest way to lose your sobriety isn't alcohol. The fastest way to lose your sobriety isn't heroin. The fastest way to lose your sobriety has nothing to do with drug abuse. You know the fastest way to lose your sobriety? The fastest way to lose your sobriety is sin. And the more you give yourselves to sin, the more you give yourselves to not living for the Lord, to walking in the wrong path, the more inebriated you become. And you know what it does? It destroys you. So here's the thing. The Bible tells us to watch. So in other words, don't sleep, right? Command number one. Number two, pay attention. Watch. And number three, be sober. Watch and be sober. In other words, you need to go out of your way to make sure that you maintain your sobriety by not giving yourself to sinful practice. Look what he says at the end, and this is a powerful closing thought. He says, for they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. In other words, when you continue to walk under the color of darkness, you will continue to be in a slumbering state, and you will continue to lose your sobriety because you will walk in inebriation because of the sin that you give yourself to. He says this, and here's the final exhortation. I love it. He says, but let us who are of the day, notice this, be sober, be sober, free of that nonsense that gets us inebriated, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. I love the idea that the helmet is indicative of the hope of salvation. In other words, we are living in a world that can cause us to lose our sanity. We're living in a world that doesn't know the difference between boy or girl. We're living in a world that doesn't know the difference between right or wrong. We're living in a world that has all kinds of insane, absolutely crazy things that is in front of us. There's so much confusion. There's so much unawareness. There's so much just oblivious nonsense happening. The things that are going on on the college campuses. You know, they're talking about freeing Palestine, the same nation that will actually destroy them if they speak freely. I mean, the nonsense that's going on. Palestine isn't even a nation, right? But this is the world that we're living in. It's a world of darkness. It's a world of confusion. But for us as believers, we don't have to worry about those things if we will keep our sobriety. If we keep our focus, we will continue to walk in the way that God asks us to walk and we will find ourselves in a place of victory. Why? Because God knows what he's doing and we don't ever have to worry about God coming as a thief in the night because we will be expecting him and we won't be surprised. So here it is, right? Don't sleep. Watch. Be sober. Give your life to the Lord. And watch God do great things. Love you guys. We have nothing to fear. God is faithful. Keep looking to him.